please help me welcome Deborah Holland. Thank you. Well, y'all did give me great courage to come up here today because I was making a lot of excuses for myself and I decided that uh, it's not a time to be a perfectionist, it's just a time to tell a story. There you go. The story and theme that I can think of in my life is um, similar to maybe the journey of a butterfly. Um, I did some reading on it and I was looking at it and a butterfly starts out by laying eggs on a leaf. And, um, and it seemed that when I was growing up, my mom was laying lots of eggs in lots of places, um, trying to find her way through life. Um, she was a butterfly herself uh, on a very difficult journey. And once the butterfly lays eggs on a leaf, I discovered that uh, it becomes a caterpillar, right? And uh, so that would be likening to, to me being born. Um, I was born in Dallas. I was born um, at a time when, when women were not very uh, recognized in, in business. And it was uh, very uh, difficult if a woman was divorced. Mm. My mom married a man that she loved, that she thought loved her. And after two years that, marriage ended in a divorce with my brother and, and myself as, as a byproduct of that marriage. <laughs> it was a marriage with, with someone who had a lot of issues in life. We uh, lived in the projects of Dallas along with my grandmother and at that time uh, there wasn't a lot of diversity in the projects of Dallas. Um, there wasn't many white people <laughs> and so I lived in an area where I learned very early in life the dangers of being out um, bring your tricycles in at three o'clock don't be out by yourself and a mother that would work day and night at jobs and leaves us leave us alone I have some very vivid memories of that time mainly of gunshots flying and trying to save my grandmother and times of my brother overdosing and you know just turmoil and my mother she's a fighter and she had something in her that said get out so we got out and she married another man who she loved and she had a daughter my sister my little sister and he was sweet he was such a nice man but she married, found love all in the wrong places, you could say, that she tried. And, um, and that ended in divorce. And shortly after that, my mother met another man. And this man was who I come to know as my father on earth, my earthly father. He was a very sweet man. And I look back on my life and my journey over through high school and all the things that I went through in life up to that point. And I realize I look back and I think, God chose this man to marry my woman, my, my mother, because it could have only been that way. Now, at the time, I didn't know that. At the time, I saw a man that loved my mother that fell in love and they got married and we moved and there were two more boys, my brothers. And then finally we moved to North Dakota where he was from. And what a shock being what a, a shock. Dallas girl. <laughs> and I learned quickly that there was a lot of expectations that I was supposed to meet. Uh, came from a very prominent family, very conservative family. And there was never a sign of divorce in this family. There was never a sign of controversy uh, or, or shame or guilt, at least on the surface. And so in my high school years, knowing that my father's in the previous had casted me aside, my mother had been married several times, I grew up with a sense, very high sense of insecurity. I felt like I had to perform for love. 
I um, was always waiting for the ax to drop. And when would this marriage dissolve? And when I was 15, laying in bed one night, I heard them discussing the divorce. I knew it was coming because I knew the signs. I'd been through it before, so this was not a surprise to me. Uh, but what was a surprise is what happened after the divorce. Um, it was a very difficult time. My mom, uh, had been a single mother, was exposed to her value as a woman and thrust into the public life as a senator. And with that, I was thrust into the public life. And I was dragged through the newspapers. And when the divorce happened, it was quite the scandal. It was quite the taboo. And at that point, I wanted to run. I wanted to hide. Um, the divorce came and my mother left the house. And there were five of us. And I was terrified of my father because I couldn't meet his expectations. And I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. About a year later, he married again, and then he left. And I was 18, and I was in North Dakota by myself. At that time, I had fallen in love with a man that um, showed me, I thought, true love. I got pregnant, and he left. And I was 17, pregnant. And at the time, that would have been such a scandal. So I had an abortion. And it was all hidden and pushed under the table. And it caused a lot of pain in my life. And after the family left, I searched for my value and worth, just like my mother did. What, should, what can I do? How am I going to survive? What, what is my identity? What's this all about? And I thought, who's God? Where is he in all this? <laughs> Yeah, I, all my life, my um, relatives would talk to me and tell me Jesus stories on the floor. And I would say, oh, that's nice. He sounds like a nice man. <laughs> but that's, I don't know a God like that. And so I searched and searched. I searched for love in all the wrong places. I was fortunate enough, though, there was something inside of me that said there's something more that I'm worth but I just don't know where to find it. I was broken, I was sad, I was unfulfilled, but yet on the outside, very successful. I pursued jobs, I pursued career, the big jobs, um, accolades. It all seemed like this is where I wanna be. Bought a house, got a car, had proposals for marriage. And one day in my 40s, I realized I've gotten all this and I'm absolutely empty, absolutely empty. Um, I had spent my time uh, for about 10 years. I was so tired of the plastic life, the image that I needed to portray, the, the men that wanted to date me for just what I looked like that I hid myself and I gained and ballooned up to an obese level of weight. I was uh, very heavy and my childhood sweetheart that wanted to marry came calling and hadn't seen me in 15 years. And when he saw me, he rejected me. Mm -hmm. and so there was another rejection. At the age of 40 now, searching for myself, I'd always wondered, when I was a child, why did my father always push me away? Why did he never want me there? Why did he not spend time with me? And I found out because he wasn't my father. I didn't know that all my life. And so those secrets, those secrets revealed a lot. Um, it took many years to mend my relationship with my mother over that betrayal of not telling me who my real father was and letting me think all that time that it was me that he was rejecting because I wasn't enough. Um, I felt as if the divorces happened because of me. We didn't do enough. We weren't quiet enough. We didn't exceed enough. Uh, that we were too much burden on the relationship between the parents that the marriage crumbled because of the children. 
And this was a tremendous amount of guilt to take on. Uh, it made me feel as if I would never be enough in life. And so I think that's what fueled me searching for more and more and filling and filling me. And that's where I relate to the caterpillar because what the caterpillar does is he goes along and he eats all he can eat until it's time to enter the cocoon. He eats of life. He goes and he consumes and he gets and he gets everything. And he gets to this point where he thinks he's ready and he enters into this next phase. And what I didn't realize is that God had an intersection for me in my life. I thought he didn't know who I was. I thought I needed to perform. I thought that he was a God for everybody else but me. I thought that if, if he knew my pain, where was he? Where was he in the divorces? And, um, and where was he in my life? And I would hear this joy and this peace and I would almost be mad. I'd be like, where's my joy? Where's my peace? Where's my portion? Always feeling not enough. And one day, after having all the money and the fame and the accolades and all the world could give me, I'd eaten everything off the leaf. I entered into the cocoon completely broken. I said, Lord, I don't know who you are, where you are, but you need to show up. Because otherwise, I'm writing you off. And I'm just going to keep looking. One day, I was sitting in a circle with a bunch of women at a church. How I got there was, I don't really, can't even tell you how I got there. <laughs> I drove by a school. It was actually in a school. And I saw a bunch of cars. I said, you know, something's missing in my life. I need to... I need to find it. I need to have some courage, you know, to find what this is and face my brokenness. So I went in the circle and I saw a bunch of women that I thought were so put together. I thought, I'm not, not going to relate to any of these women. Um, in, oh, you know, in North Dallas, they're pretty fancy. I was like, oh my gosh. And in the circle, I saw women just break down and be real. And I thought, well, maybe this is a safe place. Maybe it's safe for me to, to expose myself. Uh, and so gradually I saw that demonstrated how they would talk about how they would lie on God and how he would get them through. And I thought, I don't know that. I don't, I don't have that. I'm missing something. So they showed me what I was missing. And then one day, I said, you know what, Lord, I feel love from these people. And I feel like they're accepting me, just who I am. So I decided one day, Lord, I'll go ahead and let you have my heart. Now, I had said that sinner's prayer. I had been in church. I had heard Jesus' stories. When I was growing up, I was baptized and dunked and sprinkled and confirmed and I went to Lutheran and Presbyterian and Baptist and you know I I hadn't been in a mosque at that point but you know I had been everything and there was no real demonstration of what faith was so I got saved and I thought oh it's all it's all good now because that's what everybody tells me hey the love of Jesus well no that's not what happened to me what happened to me is it got is that Satan came after me in a big way. And for three years, I was still walking very blind to what was really going on in my life and who God was. And I was relying on myself. I was saying, oh, I'm relying on God, and I, I wasn't. One day, after a whole career of uh, accomplishments, uh, after a period of years, I had just kind of uh, lived a lifestyle that was excessive. I uh, would go out and dinner at night, we'd drink wine, and we'd talk, and pretty soon I needed wine to, to get me to relax, and I would just drink at home. But after years of this, 
soothing myself and numbing myself out at night, I realized this is not healthy for me and it's affecting my relationships, it's affecting my job. And I came to a place with the Lord, I said, Lord, you're gonna have to help me stop this because for the first time I'm finding I cannot control something. I've been controlling everything in my life and I can't control this. And so I gave it over to the Lord and I said, Lord, you need to take this from me and I need you to be real and show me how you can take something from me. And he did that day. He took that craving from me. And let me just say, I did have a brush with the law to get me to come to that place. <laughs> I was pulled over about a block from my house. And uh, the policeman said, oh, you look like you've had a little too much and uh, took me to jail and I did spend a night there. And that was eye-opening experience. <laughs> Um, I came back out of that and I said, oh Lord, you know, I'm going to do everything right. But again, I was still performing. I thought I had to perform for the Lord. Um, finally, the Lord said, you know what, I don't want anything from you but your love and your trust. And that was really the guts of it. I couldn't trust anything. So I decided I need to enter the last phase of, of my life as a butterfly. I need to go into the cocoon and I need to let this metamorphosis happen. And I had thought, it's going to kill me. That process does kill many caterpillars. They get, become liquefied in the chrysalis. Their, their, their being becomes unrecognizable, but their soul and their, they're still a caterpillar in there. And then the butterfly emerges. And I look at um, my life today and where I've come in the last 10 years since I finally found the Lord and I let him touch my life and it's amazing. And the last story I want to tell you about my, my journey with the Lord is the time I hit rock bottom. You know, after I thought I was a Christian all my life and I didn't know what that was and then I got saved and I didn't know what that was and then I <laughs> got with the, with Jesus and my life started falling apart and everything I thought God is this what it's like to follow you I don't know if I want this you know I, I I can honestly say I didn't go for the Lord because I thought I needed to be perfect I needed to get straight first before I could come to him but he said no come as you are but I've never had anybody say come as you are and I'll help you it was always do it and be a part of you know do your role so one day after truly knowing now that I'm saved. I spent a few years really struggling getting rid of the performance and everything. And one day I um, said to myself, okay, Lord, I'm at the bottom. And what got me to the bottom was my bank account. I had um, all my life, I said, after growing up in the projects, I'm not going to be poor. I will never be poor. I will do what I have to do to take care of what I have to take care of but I will never go hungry again. And one day, after just all my consulting things drying up with my business, I wasn't really marketing myself, I didn't have any energy to market myself, but for some reason the calls weren't coming and all my life the calls always came and I never marketed myself. So I'm like, I know how to do that, but how come the calls aren't coming? And I just laid down dead. I was so out of energy. I said, Lord, all I have is like 20 bucks in my bank account. Like, I've never been here before. What do I do? I don't have a job. My car just crashed and I blew up and I have nothing. I mean, what? I have nothing of the world. And the Lord, I said, Lord, I was on the side of my bed. I was beating my arms on the bed. And I said, Lord, if you're real, you got to make yourself real right now because I'm walking away from this deal because, you know, I'm in pain. And right then in that moment, he, my biblical counselor called me that I had been going to at the Hope Center, gave me encouragement. 30 seconds later, a girlfriend called me and gave me encouragement. All these different people in, that I had felt these relationships with Christians, they cared about me and they reached out to me. And I took that as a sign and I said, Lord, you're real. And so I proceeded down a track for about three months, and I hit another rock bottom. I bottomed out again financially. 
everything in my life fell apart again and I didn't have much left. I thought, what else is there, Lord? I mean, am I gonna get struck down with an illness? I mean, what is gonna happen? But at this point now, I was so fortified by this experience that I said, you know what? I have to have the courage to leave the cocoon now. I've been in here, I gotta fly. And the only way I can fly is to trust him. So I spread my wings and I flew. I broke out of the cocoon and I said, enemy, go back to the lake of fire. My identity is something bigger and it's not shaped by this world. And no matter if I don't have food or if I don't have money, I have his love. And I felt his love wrap around me so many times when I was lonely, angry, that he, I just knew it was going to be okay. Can't explain it. And finally I got to this place that said, Lord, you know, I got two choices. I can believe in you and live the rest of my life, or I cannot believe in you. And I could go to hell. And I, I took the bet. I said, I'm, I'm going with you, God. And, and you're going to have to demonstrate to me and prove to me every step of the way. Towards the end of this, I'll circle this around. When I finally quit thinking of myself, I had always served a lot and done a lot of things, but I decided to get into missions and ministry. I always knew I had a really big heart. I have a gift. I think of uh, compassion and mercy. I am always can run into a very difficult situation and relate. And I needed so much to belong. So I joined a church in the ministry and I started using my passion with food and started looking back at child hunger and with courage and said, you know, I can be, um, I can be a light for the Lord and that's what butterflies do butterflies fly around their job after they come out of the cocoon is they only have a week or two and their job is to fly around and pollinate everything <laughs> just land on all the flowers and pollinate everything lay some eggs and their life is over with and so I decided Lord what's gonna make you happy and I heard the Lord said love me and love your neighbor mm -hmm. and I said is it that simple can it really be that simple, Lord? Will that fulfill me? And he said, oh, yes. And so as I learned to love, and as I learned to give, but give not to get back, but to mm. give to release, as I release love, God fills me with love. And so I've learned his divine, his uh, way of working with me, is he empties me and he fills me. And, um, and then from there, it's, it overflows to a level that he teaches me to give it out. And so now in my journey where I'm at, is I feel God calling me to something I can't see. Something I can't see in the world. Uh, a new business development, a new venture. And it costs money. It costs time, and I don't want to be taken advantage of. I've been taken advantage of in business most of my life. I don't want to waste moments of my life anymore. And God said to me, I heard him say, he'll restore the time the locust has eaten, and I can tell you that he has. Um, he has restored me to a place where I feel energized and I feel young inside. Age is not uh, something that I think about anymore. I don't think about, I don't worry about my health. I don't worry about things. And the constant tape of my performance and the beating up and the shame and the guilt and the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, that tape is gone finally. And what that has been replaced with is freedom the freedom to fly. And I've learned that God is in my cheering corner, mm -hmm. clapping for me. As a child, it was what I could do, but 
he, I do know now in my heart that he accepts me as I am and he is calling me forward to something more than I can ever imagine. And so just as the butterfly, I don't know where, what flower I will land on next, <laughs> but I know that the sunshine that I need to survive as a butterfly will come and it comes from the Lord. And every time the sun shines down on me, I think of his love. Mm. And that's it. Mm.